Good evening. My name is Gary Flowers. I will be your master of ceremonies this evening for the Policy Pathways Incorporated second annual fall celebration. We are so happy that you joined us this evening. There's a lot going on in the world this evening yeah. uh, in other places. So thank you for taking the time to join us. We know that your time is valuable and we appreciate your interest in ensuring that future generations will look upon public policy formation in a sense that gives them a pathway toward careers in public policy. So once again, on behalf of Policy Pathways, I'd like to welcome you this evening. I'd like to turn the program over to Dr. Halani Lucas. Dr. Lucas and I go back maybe a year and a half when she asked me to help her uh, bring about uh, policy pathways at Virginia Union at that time. Uh, and so before we get there, I'd love to introduce Reverend Dr. Leo Whitaker, who will bring us our invocation this evening. Uh, he is the director minister of the Virginia Baptist General Convention. Dr. Whitaker, would you please? Good evening to each of you. Can you hear me? Yes. Thank you so kindly. Good evening and thank you for the opportunity to celebrate and share. Let us bow in prayer. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. We gather this evening to say thank you for the Policy Pathways Incorporated and its second annual fall celebration. Bless the vision and leadership of paving pathways for future policy leaders in a time of crisis. Grant your blessings upon each participant, their families, their individual and collective service to democracy, and their mentoring and championing efforts for children and young adults. We thank you for the wisdom, works, and witness of the Honorable Lawrence Douglas Wilder as our first African-American governor, who is a trailblazer for justice and equality, we praise you for his preparation under the maples and oaks of Virginia Union University and at the Mecca Howard University and his school of law. May the impact of historical black universities and colleges continue to guide the world and to educate global leaders like Governor Wilder, Supreme Court Justice like Thurgood Marshall, and hopefully on November the 3rd, the first female and African-American vice president of these United States of America. Thank you for Senator Mark Warner and those who serve in our local government, the General Assembly and the United States of America and every court and each school system. Bless every participant and each presenter and their service to our dear Commonwealth country and world. Thank you for the village that has nurtured each of our honorees. May your rich blessings rest on the Hernandez family, the Lee family, the Miles family, the Graham family, the Holt family, and the Bryant family, and the youth and young adults we have participated in the Policy Pathways Incorporated. Bless every school and college and university and give them a future of hope and love. Thank you for the sponsors like Richmond Public Schools, the Davis Brothers Construction Company, Change Lab Solution and Create One, and so many others who support the visionary service and leadership of Dr. Pauline Lucas. Thank you for her family, as well as the board of directors and those who nurture and educate children in diversity. And may you continue to lead us as we do the work of your kingdom. Forgive us when we try to block the pathways of justice on one hand, and forgive us when we, with the other hand, intentionally redirect righteousness for some, but not for all. God of justice, please heal this nation and every nation from the coronavirus, the disease called injustice, and the sickness known as discrimination. In the name of the one who is always alpha, first of all, servant of all, we shall transcend all, bless us. 
in the name of the one who is Omega, who established that friendship is essential to the soul. Keep us. May the God who is Alpha and Omega bless this celebration and grant us shalom and peace. Shine your face upon us. Amen. 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 Thank you, Dr. Whitaker. I'd like to present to some and introduce to others now Dr. Palani Lucas. She has 10, over 10 years experience in interpreting public policy around the nation. In addition to a PhD, she holds a master's in theological studies uh, and an MBA from Harvard Business School. She is responsible for the Harvard University Summer Policy Program, which she has introduced to other districts across the country. So if you would, please give a warm welcome by a head nod or an eye blink to Dr. Palani Lucas. Thank you, thank you everyone. It's wonderful seeing all of you here. What a blessing it is for you to join us. We are just honored by your presence this evening. And on behalf of the Policy Pathways Board of Directors, I just want to say this is going to be an evening of celebration and inspiration. We will recognize Governor Wilder and six very outstanding young people who are making changes in their communities, in their schools, in their cities, states, and the nation. I want to thank Mr. Gary Flowers for being our master of ceremonies this evening and welcome the Honorable Jason Cameras, the Honorable Jennifer McClellan, the Honorable Mark Warner. I want to thank Mr. James Dyke for joining us and also the Honorable L. Douglas Wilder. Thank you to all of our honorees. Thank you to your families, friends, and colleagues for joining us this evening. Our theme this evening is paving pathways for future policy leaders in a time of crisis. As you know, the coronavirus pandemic disrupted almost every area of life and society. Over the past 10 months, Policy Pathways and its partners have worked collaboratively to continue to serve youth. While the pandemic may have caused shifts in the programmatic format in which we had planned to offer our Summer Academy, it did not disrupt our mission to train and educate young people who desire to become leaders in public policy, public administration, and in policy-related fields in the private and public sectors. Our society and the world needs to hear the voices of these young people. We need to embrace them and nurture them as future leaders and help them to bring about change in their communities. One of our first decisions at Policy Pathways was to shift our summer academy from a face-to-face -face format to a distance learning format. And we were able to do this through collaboration with our partners with remarkable success, we set up the technological infrastructure to offer our online program. We established the proper connectivity to operate in a virtual space. We trained and oriented policy pathways administrators and teaching staff. We held trial runs and hosted well-organized and informative opening and closing ceremonies. We were delighted to have 
the Richmond School Board Vice Chair with us, Cheryl Burke, over the summer. Dr. Daphne Bazil Harrison joined us. Congressman Bobby Scott was there. Miss Sarah DeGia from the Change Lab Solutions also joined us. We also had a number of faculty and their names are listed in the back of your program. We are delighted that we had partners like the Richmond Public Schools and also Petersburg City Public Schools who joined us. Our capstone sites were the Virginia Department of Housing and Community Development, the, the Virginia Department of Transportation, and the office of U.S. Senator Tim Kaine. And together, we worked to achieve our mission this summer. We continue to strive for educational and operational excellence. This evening, I'm delighted to announce the Policy Pathways Richmond Public Schools Partnership that has occurred under the brilliant leadership of Superintendent Jason Cameras. Through our Policy and Society year-round college preparatory program, our goal is to provide RPS students with a window into how policy thinkers, decision makers, and analysts approach and address problems. We want to know and teach young people how they formulate policy decisions and actions and how they assess the impacts of policy decisions on communities. Together, we aim to bolster diversity in academic and talent pipelines and help RPS graduates enter policy-related careers and degree programs. We are grateful to work together with a team at RPS of highly competent and committed educators and professional administrators. We are grateful for Dr. Tracy Epp and also for the work of Candace Vini. We are working with Dr. Mylandra Coleman at John Marshall High School and Mr. Wayne Thomas at George Wythe High School. Without their support and working together with them, this project would not have happened. And so we are grateful for you. So the Board of Policy Pathways is delighted that each and every one of you have joined us this evening for an evening of celebration and inspiration. We want you to be inspired. And so what we will do now is to debut a video. This video is entitled Policy Pathways Paving Pathways for Future Policy Leaders. You will hear more on the video about Policy Pathways and our Summer Academy Online. Thank you again for joining us and have a wonderful evening tonight. My name is Dr. D. Pulani Lucas. I'm president and CEO of Policy Pathways. My name is Delta Bowers. I am the president and CEO of DR Ben Associates Consultants. I am the former interim dean and professor of management and marketing at Virginia Union University Sydney Hill School of Business. I sit on several boards, including Policy Pathways, in which I am one of the founders. I'm also the current treasurer on the board. My name is Dr. Patrick Graham. I'm senior policy advisor for the City of Richmond Office of Community Wealth Building. And I am also a board member of Policy Pathways Incorporated. 
What we do at Policy Pathways, we offer a two-week summer program, the Summer Academy for Policy Leadership in Public Service. And over that two-week period, participants are introduced to five core areas of study, critical thinking, policy formation, policy analysis, advocacy and persuasion, and our capstone project. The capstone project it affords our participants the opportunity to apply what they are learning in their courses during the day to a real-world policy issue. The capstone projects require participants to work in teams and they are then assigned to a capstone site where they actually work with individuals in government or various other agencies where they can actually get hands-on experience grappling with a, a real-world issues. I had a really wonderful experience with Policy Pathways this summer. For two weeks I got to take a deep dive into the different areas of policy while taking classes with professors with advanced degrees that would be teaching high-level college classes. I feel that I learned a lot that I can apply both to future academic endeavors as well as in my professional life. The seed was planted during my time at Harvard University. I was working with the Summer Leadership Institute. At that time, I realized that there are many students who don't really understand, and these are students in urban areas, students of color, don't quite understand the impact of policy in what they see around them in their communities. It was at that time that I thought a program that is called today Policy Pathways would be important for training and educating youth, particularly from marginalized populations. Well, the mission is actually to get more students and more young people engaged in policy and also policy pathways careers in policy. Our vision is a society with greater demographic representation at the highest levels of government. Policy Pathways is a phenomenal model for teaching youth policy. We had the opportunity to roll out our first Summer Academy online this summer. Uh, we were fortunate to graduate 11 students from around the country. We had a stellar group of faculty teaching the students, a better leader, Dr. Polani, a better board, uh, and our other founders. It was just sensational. When I was in elementary school, our teachers had us reading articles in the Oakland Tribune. And it was at that time that I was first exposed to public policy and social policy. From there, several years later, I had the opportunity to intern at City Hall with one of the city council members, Leo Bazil. From that internship, I ran for the president of the student body at Cal State Hayward. Those two opportunities, I had the opportunity to really be exposed to public policy and to meet a number of leading politicians from uh, Congresswoman Maxine Waters, Governor Doug Wilder. And so these experiences really formed my life. There are many opportunities within public administration and public policy. I envision for the young people to be policymakers, legislators, researchers. Policy affects every aspect of our being. By educating our young people in terms of what is necessary to develop policy, I believe that this program sets that foundation. As we look at our political and social landscape today, obviously equity has become a very important issue. By 2040, we will be a majority minority nation. Um, there will be more people of color. And this generation that we're in now really represents that in a very real and statistical way. In our Senate, only 7% of chiefs of staff and those in policy are people of color. Latinos, for example, represent 12% of the voters, but represent policy staff in the Senate in single digits. It really shows you that we have a lot of work to do in terms of diversifying the policy field. We need people who can identify with populations that are now growing and will represent this nation in a real way.
current legislators, parents of these young people, educators should be willing to support young people in their desire to understand policy and what it takes to establish policy because it impacts their future, the next generation's future, and the generations after that. I took a lot away from, we had a specific lecture from Dr. Russell about standardized testing and the history of organizations like the College Board. It was especially relevant because a lot of the participants were coming to take those tests in the coming months or applying to colleges partially due to those scores that they received on those tests. So I found it really relevant and really interesting to see how these organizations had developed to have such control over education in many parts of the, in many parts of the country. I'm a business major, business management major, so um, I'm focusing on small business management. Um, so I'm hoping to do something entrepreneurial, hopefully something with the arts, something intersecting the two, something creative. We are in an environment that we've never seen before. Obviously, the pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic, has influenced a lot of what we do now. And so we decided as a board, we would have virtual learning opportunities for youth, that we weren't going to let the pandemic stop us from educating our future policymakers. Young people now are even more engaged and wanting to know more about policy, but most of all, they want to do something about policy. If you are interested in learning more about policy pathways and our initiatives, please visit our website at policypathways.org. Not only will you be able to learn more about our organization, you also can make a tax-deductible donation. We appreciate your support. On behalf of Policy Pathways and the Board of Directors, I want to thank each and every one of you who supported our initiatives and endeavors, our fundraising campaigns. We sincerely appreciate your commitment to our vision, and we thank you for believing in us, for believing in young people who have visions and dreams. Thank you for helping us to pave pathways for future policy leaders. See that by that video, Policy Pathways is making a discernible dent in the chasm between young people and their zeal in the streets and understanding that for all of their zealousness, there is a policy behind almost everything that impacts their lives. And so Policy Pathways is making that difference. I want to introduce now, uh, who has become a good friend over the last uh, two plus years, Jason Cameron serves as the superintendent of the Richmond Public Schools. He's uh, kept his promise and come on to my radio show, not only every month, but since COVID, every week on Tuesday mornings. And so I have appreciated our evolving relationship. Jason Cameron comes to Richmond Public Schools from the District of Columbia Public Schools, where he was a high-ranking administrator and looking at creative ways to impact students in the District of Columbia, the nation's capital. He has the distinction of being selected as the National Teacher of the Year, Mathematics Teacher by Training, in 2005. Since in Richmond, he's inherited a system that needs improving. He's brought creativity. He's brought empathy. More than anything else, God gave us two ears and one mouth for a reason. He's a good listener. He's listened to the retired educators of Richmond Public Schools and young people as well. And now that COVID is upon us, he is navigating the Richmond Public Schools ship in a very steady but creative way. Please welcome to Policy Pathways Celebration, Jason Cameras. Thank you so much, Gary. It is uh, such an honor and, and pleasure to be here. Thank you also for 
uh, your friendship and your wisdom and guidance. I feel that I have learned so much from you uh, in uh, all of our exchanges. So thank you so, so much. Um, I also wanna just begin by saying thank you to Dr. Lucas, uh, who I had the great pleasure of meeting at Virginia University, um, I guess it's almost two years ago now. And uh, she was at the beginning uh, of some of this work. And when she uh, shared it with me, I was instantly uh, enthralled and inspired. And um, uh, as, as everyone listening tonight knows, uh, she has a very persuasive way about her. Um, and I was just immediately struck by the potential of policy pathways. And to see this evening come together, I think is a testament to your leadership, your vision. So um, on behalf of Richmond Public Schools, I just wanna say thank you to you, Dr. Lucas, uh, for all that you have done and all that I know you will continue to do on behalf of our young people. I also uh, would like to just uh, congratulate uh, Governor Wilder, uh, our honoree this evening, uh, of course, an icon uh, in Virginia politics uh, in the field of making policy to improve the lives um, of all Virginians um, and certainly as a, a key icon of African-American leadership, which is so incredibly important, particularly for the young people here in Richmond Public Schools. I uh, now formally want to just bring greetings on behalf of RPS uh, and in particular on behalf of our school board chair, Ms. Linda Owen, our vice chair, Ms. Cheryl Burke, um, and one of the Policy Pathways board members, uh, uh, board member Don Page uh, from the 8th district. So on behalf of the entire school board, and on behalf of the school system, I bring greetings. I also want to recognize and thank uh, Ms. Melandra Coleman from John Marshall and Mr. Wayne Thomas from George Wythe High School, uh, two of the individuals who have played uh, such an instrumental role in the partnership with Policy Pathways. I would be remiss if I also didn't give a special shout out to three RPS students who are being honored this evening, Ms. Terry Lee uh, from Franklin Military Academy, Mr. Jazz Miles, uh, who actually interned with me last summer uh, from Richmond Community High School, and Ms. Deja Graham from Franklin Military. Uh, a huge congratulations to all of them and the other honorees, all of whom are so, uh, so deserving. Let me just conclude by saying, um, you know, one of the reasons this program is so dear to my heart is I was actually a policy major uh, in college. Um, I believe in the power that good people with big hearts and sharp minds have to change the world for the better. And I'm reminded this evening of, of that very famous quote from James Baldwin, not everything that is faced can be changed, but nothing can be changed until it is faced. And I see policy pathways as the instrument of helping our young people have the skills and the knowledge and the social and political capital to face the inequities and injustices that still infect our society so that they can change them and create a better world for themselves, their children, and the future of Richmond and all of Virginia. So on behalf of Richmond Public Schools with a deep, deep heart of gratitude uh, to Dr. Lucas and all who have made this possible, thank you and welcome. Thank you, Superintendent Cameras. We'll now have greetings from the Virginia General Assembly by way of State Senator Jennifer McClellan. She is a dear friend as well. Having graduated from the University of Virginia undergrad, she received her law degree from the University of Richmond and has served uh, in distinguished fashion in the House of Delegates and now the Virginia State Senate. Please welcome to Policy Pathways, Senator Jennifer McClellan. Thank you, Gary, and uh, thank you, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here with Policy Pathways tonight, um, and I especially want to uh, say hello and congratulations to tonight's uh, honorees. Um, it's a pleasure to be here on behalf of my colleagues in the General Assembly to congratulate uh, Governor uh, Doug Wilder on receiving the 2020 uh, Policy Leadership Award. 
uh, as well as our high school uh, and college students uh, recipients for their leadership and community service. Um, you all know that Governor Wilder blazed a trail for many of us to follow, um, to use public policy to improve our communities uh, and to bring true the promises of uh, the foundation, the founding documents of our country of life, liberty, and justice for all. And Governor Wilder throughout his career uh, fought to try to make those uh, words true um, and blaze the path for all of us. And uh, all of our participants, our young um, awardees tonight, the high school students and the college students uh, themselves are following in the path of young people throughout our history who didn't wait, uh, but saw change and jumped in to, to make it, whether it is the children of the civil rights movement uh, here in Richmond, uh, in Greensboro, and many other places, uh, leading sit-ins, whether it's the children uh, in Birmingham uh, protesting peacefully only to be met with police dogs and fire hoses, whether it's the students uh, after the Parkland shooting demanding uh, common sense uh, legislation to combat gun violence, whether it's the students we saw this summer in the wake of the George Floyd murder uh, demanding change, Barbara Johns leading the, the, the walkout of the Moton School uh, that culminated in Brown versus Board. Young people throughout our history have had a part in changing history and improving their communities because they understand just as you, the students tonight understand, your future is at stake and you can't wait to affect that change. You have to take action when you see a wrong, when you see an injustice and there is so much at stake. We need you, we need you to be at the table um, and when you're not allowed at the table to demand that the table come to the community or you create your own. Um, and as someone who got interested in government and politics as an 11 year old, um, but didn't really get active until college, um, it's a pleasure to be here today to see the, the high school and college students uh, to be um, honored for their work. And I can't wait to see what you will continue to do uh, in the years to come. So once again, congratulations to everyone. It's a pleasure to be here and I can't wait to uh, hear from you later in the program. Thank you, Senator McClellan. I'd like to also bring to the stage now and to this policy celebration, uh, this is Beverly Davis, another dear friend. She, uh, in addition to serving on the board of public uh, policy pathways, she's an associate professor at J. Sergeant Reynolds Community College. She also serves as chief operating officer for family owned business Davis Brothers Construction, uh, which goes back two generations with my family. My grandfather uh, and the Davis's father worked together many years ago. And so as a friend and as a public policy advocate, please welcome Ms. Beverly Davis, who will introduce our speaker tonight. Thank you, Gary. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Beverly Davis and the Vice President of Policy Pathways Incorporated. Tonight, our speaker, the Honorable Senator and former Governor of Virginia, Mark Warner, will be with us via, via video because of a conflicting engagement. In addition to his bio in your program, I would like to share a few highlights of Mark's outstanding career and accomplishments before the video. Mark was the first person in his family to graduate from college. He spent 20 years as a technology executive and business leader in Virginia before being elected governor of Virginia. As governor, Mark worked across the aisle to bring 130,000 new jobs to the Commonwealth of Virginia. He also helped lead Virginia into the 21st century with the installation of more than 700 miles of broadband connecting nearly 700,000 people to the internet. When he left the governor's office in 2006, Virginia was ranked as a, as a nation's best state for business, best management state, best state in which to receive a public education. Two years later, 2008, Mark was elected to the U.S. Senate and reelected in 2014 and running again now for his third time. I'm sure his busy election schedule kept him from being with us today. 
with the, with the election less than two weeks away. As, Virginia, as Virginia's senior senator, Mark, has spoke, Mark focus was on challenges our company faces next from the out of control cost of health care to climate can change to automation and the future of our economy. He has championed lowering the cost of prescription drugs, fought to protect our nation's treasures like the Chesapeake Bay, and found innovative ways to create jobs in Virginia. Mark believes that our government should be responsible, accountable, and transparent. When he learned that funding to the historically black colleges and universities had lapsed, he passed a law to restore that funding. When he discovered the terrible state of housing for our service members and our families, he passed a law to hold landlords exploiting them accountable. As our country's deficit climbed to over a trillion dollars, Mark passed a law to make all federal spending information publicly available on the internet. Mark serves as the Vice Chair of the Senate Intelligence Committee and is committed to strengthening our national security. He has been a vocal advocate using the country to take foreign technology threats seriously, charged with, invest charged with investigating the extent and impact of Russian meddling in the 2016 election between Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. Mark's investigation was praised by both Republicans and Democrats for being conducted in a thoughtful, judicious, and bipartisan manner. Mark and his wife, Lisa Collins, live in Alexandria, Virginia. They have three daughters. And now we will have a few words from Mark Warner via video. Thank you. Hello, I'm Virginia Senator Mark Warner, and I want to join tonight in the second annual celebration of policy leadership. Um, your recipient tonight for the Policy Leadership Award is Governor L. Douglas Wilder. You know, I wouldn't be standing here uh, as your United States Senator if I hadn't had the mentorship of Doug Wilder. As a relatively young man, I got involved in Virginia politics and ended up serving as Doug Wilder's campaign manager and then transition director when he became governor. Doug Wilder taught me about politics in Virginia. He taught me about leadership. He showed that what someone with a dream and a vision could do in terms of overcoming incredible obstacles. First as a state senator, then lieutenant governor, and then finally as governor. And as governor, Governor Wilder helped navigate one of the worst fiscal crises in Virginia history. He also worked with both Democrats and Republicans to earn Virginia national recognition in terms of management in the Commonwealth. I'm proud to call Doug Wilder my mentor. I'm proud to call Doug Wilder my friend. And as I said, I would not be standing here as Virginia's senator and previously that governor without Doug Wilder's leadership and guidance. I also want to commend the six young policy award winners. Um, you know, these are unusual times in the time of COVID. The fact that we have to do this presentation virtually is evidence of that. Uh, but during these times, when so much of politics seems kind of crazy and bizarre, it's more important than ever that you stay involved, that you vote, that you participate, that you recognize that your voices, just like Doug Wilder's voice and Mark Warner's voice, need to count as we try to build a stronger Virginia and stronger America. So congratulations. And thank you, Governor Warner. I'd like to bring to your attention now uh, one of my mentors in state government, the Honorable James Dyke. I met him as Secretary of Education in the Wilder administration, but he's a, a broad thinker and a skilled attorney. Having served as the chair of the Fairfax Chamber of Commerce, as well as the Greater Washington, D.C. Board of Trade in 2010. Please welcome to Policy Pathways, the Honorable James Dyke. Thank you very much, Gary, for that the wonderful introduction and uh, having an opportunity to be associated with you and also all the other wonderful people on the, uh, on the call, uh, Senator McClellan and uh, Jason. Uh, Senator Warner, uh, who I've known for a number of years as well, and uh, 
I'm just honored to be here and to be a part of this great celebration for Policy Pathways. Uh, I had to dis have the distinct honor of uh, introducing the person who's going to win the Policy Leadership Award. And in getting prepared for that, I looked at the criteria. Uh, you are looking for someone who has initiated and forged policy reforms on issues that were critical to the Commonwealth and to our nation. Uh, it's interesting that this program is designed to get people involved in changing policy, uh, because listening to some of the other speakers, I too was touched in that regard, uh, because quite frankly, when I was in high school, I was planning to become a math major. And as a high school student, I participated in the March on Washington in 1963. And because of that march and because of what it stood for, I decided to become a political science major and a lawyer in order to effectuate social change and to change policy. So for me, this is a double honor to be a part of that. And looking at your criteria for looking at people who have changed policy, if you Google that particular phrase, up would pop a picture of the 66th governor of the Commonwealth of Virginia, L. Douglas Wilder. I had the honor of serving as his secretary of education and was able to see up close his unmatched efforts to effect change and to benefit the Commonwealth. When he became governor, he inherited a two and a half billion dollar hole in the budget, a feat that everybody said would basically uh, deter him from becoming an effective governor. Well, the governor not only overcame that, he overcame it with honors. For two consecutive years, Virginia was named the best fiscally managed state in the nation because of his leadership in policy and fiscal responsibility. He established the Rainy Day Fund, which is now the gold standard for fiscal management in the Commonwealth of Virginia. And I couldn't help but notice, some of you may have recently seen this great Cheetos commercial that, you, that featured MC Hammer with the song, Can't Touch This. That was our motto for the Rainy Day Fund. You can't touch this, and it worked to perfection. He also made his support for education a great priority, and he shaped policy to create an atmosphere that made it possible to have an opportunity for some of the students, all the students that we're gonna be celebrating tonight, because he recognized that education is the most important tool we can provide in order for our young people to accomplish the kind of potential that they need to be able to accomplish in this world. And he fought for that. The best job I've ever had was serving as his secretary of education and having a chance to see him up close and watch how he shaped policy, how he would take a situation where people would say, well, this may be important, but I just don't know if we can do it right at this particular point. Well, his motto to me and to everybody else was, if the thing is right, the time is right. And that meant blazing ahead. And that's how he was able to accomplish all that he has done. I felt that I, in essence, earned a doctorate in governance from him because of the approach that he took to government. Uh, and that particular importance came home to me this week. And I probably talked longer than the governor wants me to and introduce him, but I wanted to get these points out. Earlier this week, we saw some developments involving VMI that brought to attention to me some of the things we had to face during his administration. And when he was confronted with a similar situation, he made it clear that a tax supported institution that is open to the public cannot deny half of the population of Virginia admission because they're female. And because of the stand he took he was supported by the Supreme Court, and that is the law of the land. I can assure you that if we were faced with the situation that is currently out there at VMI, we would deal with it in the same efficient way. With that lead in, and hopefully the governor is not too upset that I've taken a couple of minutes to introduce him, I would like to present to you the person that you have very rightfully selected to be your honoree this year for the presentation of the award the 66th governor of the Commonwealth of Virginia, L. Douglas Wilder, my friend, and the icon that was referenced earlier in the remark. 
Thank you, Gary. Wonderful. Thank you so very much. Thank you. At this time, we would like to present the Policy Leadership Award to the Honorable L. Douglas Wilder. This award celebrates your outstanding contributions to initiating policy change and your commitment to forging policy reform on issues critical to the community, city, state, nation, and the world. We express our deep appreciation for your exceptional service and leadership, and also your dedication to nurturing and developing future policy leaders. And I myself am a graduate of the Wilder School of Government. I recently earned in 2013, earned my PhD in public policy and public administration from the VCU Wilder School. And little did I know when I was an intern and president of the student body in undergrad that I would be a graduate of the Wilder School. And so on behalf of the Board of Policy Pathways, I present to you, Governor Wilder, the Policy Leadership Award for 2020. We can give him a hand. Very good. Well, <clears throat> let me thank you, Dr. Lucas, and to Gary Flowers, uh, Senator McClellan, Senator Warner, Jim Bake, and to all of those who have spoken prior to my being here. It's uh, humbling to receive this, and I think policy pathways will continue to provide pathways and roadways and highways for people who are really, really deserving and needing the kind of leadership you speak of. Uh, the Black Lives Matter movement, sparked by the killings of unarmed persons across our nation, has led to much discussion about the rise of racism in America. Now, I've had quite a bit of experience with dealing with and eradicating racism as we have seen it. When I was elected governor some 30 years ago, many people thought that we had signaled the end of that era continuing in our state and in our nation. We've seen the removal of statues, but I have maintained after that, what? So you take the statue down, but what's in its place? That sentiment still obviously remains in so many instances. Last year, we experienced right here, state officials being exposed to, as having paraded and masqueraded in blackface. The governor, current governor, and the attorney general. Now these weren't a hundred years ago. These were new statues that had been built. Of course, they have said things differently now. They have asked for forgiveness and they said they want to move on. But the revelation of institutional racism practiced and preached at VMI, as has been pointed out by Jim Dyke, has brought us to the tacit realization that racism is still here. Now, the governor and the attorney general are charged with the responsibility to enforce the law and to protect the citizens of Virginia from racial discrimination. I was asked some while back as to how I felt about whether either of them should resign. I didn't say anything too much other than to say that that was a decision up to them. And yet I said this, that after having watched the governor in his press conference that he should better know what he needs to do. Well, what bothers me 
and Jim Dyke put his hand right on it. We are VMI in terms, VMI would not exist but for us. And I'm speaking about the taxpayers of Virginia. We spend more money on VMI, I am told, than on any institution of state government in terms of a university in Virginia. Now, as Jim Dye pointed out, you think that I would have said I'm going to appoint a commission hmm. to study something for a, a year, maybe, or more, or less, for that matter, a year or so, and spend taxpayers' dollars to do it? when we've got the evidence right before us. The students and the people are there to tell you what they've seen, what they've heard. How long do you have to wait before action has taken place? And you see now why we need the leadership that I speak of. That's why with me, it's never been easy. Well, I was told I shouldn't run for office, period. I shouldn't run to be the first state Senator, since Reconstruction, right, I couldn't win. I won. You're going to run for lieutenant governor? You got to be crazy. We can't have that. I ran. I won. Now, that's okay. You're carrying it a little too far. And yet, I was told that when I didn't know that the state song was carrying me back to old Virginia. A lamentation of a slave saying, once he dies, he wants to go back to Virginia to be reunited with old Massa and old Mrs. And when they all die, he wants to join them in heaven. Can you believe this is the mentality? Oh, it took me 17 years. They stopped singing it right away. I hadn't even been sworn in, hardly. And yet I've seen what they've tried to do with some of the black colleges and universities here. Virginia State College almost wiped out. I had to come as a state senator and try to save it. And so I would say to the young people here, we need leadership. We need leadership at all levels. We don't need people who call themselves leaders. Leadership is a tautology. It defines itself. It means to do just that, to lead, to demand what is right, and to criticize what is wrong, and don't give a damn about what others will say about you. And that'll come from friends. That'll come from people that you thought were friends. That will come from supporters. Right now, America, there is no one who questions at all as to whether Joe Biden could win this election this November without massive, strong support from what community? From the black community. Oh, you got to know that. And yet the black community is still asking the question, all right, when is my time going to come? When is our time going to come? When are the historical black colleges and universities going to receive their fair share? They carried the burden for years. I don't care whether it was the state supported school or not, my alma mater. Virginia Union produced some of the finest that you could have. First black admiral in the Navy from Virginia Union, Sam Gravely. First black Doctor graduating from the Medical College of Virginia. My classmate, elementary, high, and college, Jean Pace Harris. And yet, all the time that was being carried, where were they getting any funds and monies from to support those kids? So we have a responsibility, a big one. I would say to Governor Northam today, do it. Take the action. And if you don't know what to do, say that. If you've got to wait for a study commission to tell you what to do, then that tells us that you don't know what to do. So the people of Virginia, particularly you young people, demand it, criticize, be a part of the decision-making process. I will persist until I succeed because I was never delivered in this world in defeat. Nor does the fetism flow through my blood or the blood of my ancestors. I don't want to be associated with the sheep, sleep with the sheep, because the slaughterhouse of failure is not my destiny. And I will persist until I succeed. You do that. Go and do it. And I will be there with you. God bless you.
Thank you. Thank you so much, Governor Wilder. And that is, um, that is inspirational. And we will now turn it back to Mr. Gary Flowers. Thank you so much, Governor Wilder. One thing we should all take from the governor's statements is that if you are a leader, lead. If you need to ask a commission or another body to give you advice, then maybe you are not the leader you purport to be. And so Governor Wilder, thank you for your time in your space, never asking, but leading the path. And so we thank you. I was a young man who through high school, you know, people were saying, well, Gary Flowers, you should run for office. You know, so I was thinking maybe a political career. And it was Governor Wilder who hired a 26 year old as a special assistant in health and human resources. And I understood the value of policy. Right. And I want to thank you publicly, Governor Wilder, but more so that you showed us as young people how to lead. And if you weren't bashful, you didn't ask for permission. <laughs> and so people followed you, not just because of your competence and your courage and your commitment, but you had that zeal that said, you know what, I'm going to blaze the path, others will follow. So on behalf of all of us who are younger than you, thank you. God bless. Thank you. Thank you so terribly much. We will now move and segue into the portion of the evening where we recognize young people who will blaze past uh, a policy on their own. And I want to present the first presenter, Dr. Patrick Graham, Board of Directors and also Board Member of Policy Pathways. Thank you, Gary. Um, you know, it's just interesting as I, I'm hearing the Honorable L. Douglas Wilder and hearing Gary talk. Many of you don't know, we are also fraternity brothers. So I'm actually um, pleased to, to see them both tonight. The Honorable L. Douglas Wilder and all of our youth public service honorees have received their gift packages before the ceremony. But I want to make sure that you understand that the youth recipients each received a personal plaque, a letter from the Honorable Governor Ralph Norton, a message from the Honorable Delegate Dolores L. Quinn, a gift of $200, and a policy pathways label pin reserved for those who meet our mission standards along with an official policy pathways, writing pen, t-shirt and mask. And now it's time to celebrate our youth honorees. As a past CEO of three civil rights, equity and talent development organizations and senior policy advisor for the city of Richmond's wealth building and poverty strategy, I am proud of the young people we honor tonight and feel empowered by their stories and futures. Through these young people, we are in good hands and minds. I have the pleasure of introducing our first Youth Public Service Award recipient. He is a student of Tandem Friends School of Charlotte, I mean Charlottesville, Virginia. He is an active participant in the Black Lives Matter movement to ensure equity and justice remain principles of our communities and democracy. An organizer of charity fundraisers, lifting up various causes in his community. He is a co-leader of the Gay Straight Alliance in his community for a greater understanding and celebration of difference. He is a leader for voter registration and knowledge campaign, ensuring that we all remember our right and duties to participate in democracy. And most important, he exemplifies the servant leadership and sacrifice required to be part of the things that are bigger than himself. 
Policy Pathways Incorporated 2020 Youth Public Service Award is presented to Akari Hernandez in recognition of his leadership, service, and demonstrated responsibility to others. Your contributions and commitment have truly made a difference to your family, school, organization, and community. Pathways second annual fall celebration Thursday, October 22nd, 2020. And on this plaque that was presented to Akari, you can see the Policy Pathways Board of Directors and President Dr. D. Polani Lucas, Mrs. Beverly B. Davis, Vice President, Dr. Cynthia Armayo. Secretary, Dr. Delta L. Bowers, Treasurer, Dr. Ted Ritter, Member, Dr. Ashayan Suin, known as Ivan, Member, the Honorable Dolores L. McQuinn, a member, and the Honorable Dawn C. Page, Member, Mr. Albert M. Brinson, Member, and yours truly, Dr. Patrick Graham, Member, which this actually is on all of our recipients plaques. We thank you again. I honor and introduce Akari Hernandez. Thank you so much, Dr. Graham, for the introduction. Well, um, in reference to former Governor Wilder's words here earlier tonight, there's still a big old statue to take down here in Charlottesville. Along with this award here, I believe each of the award recipients got a signed letter from Governor Northam commending us for our work. So to Governor Northam, I'll say, put your money where your mouth is and listen to youth activists at the crossroads of every issue. I'm so grateful to be here tonight. It's absolutely crazy to be on the same stage as Zy Bryant. She's kind of like a hometown hero for a lot of us. I wanna thank Dr. Lucas for no nominating me for this award. It's an absolute honor. I also wanna recognize that this is just a starting point for what I see to be a long future in fighting for equity and justice in public policy. And to recognize that I'm not sitting here tonight as some activist icon, but rather a student who's sitting here learning every day where the fight for justice is and what my role in it is. Really quickly, I wanna acknowledge a couple people, both activists and organizers who are doing some amazing work right now, who have taught me so much and are out there right now fighting for change instead of here accepting awards. Stephanie Younger at Black Womanist on Instagram and her work as founder of the Black Feminist Collective. She's a rich Richmond youth activist and abolitionist and absolutely awe-inspiring. Deja Fox, speaker and activist who I got to see speaking in front of SCOTUS last, this past weekend and she's absolutely amazing. Charlie at DNA Aesthetics on Instagram is a fantastic voice for indigenous sovereignty and the land back movement. And finally, Blair Amani, she's a writer, educator, and activist and such a force for kindness and education. I was planning to put all their tags in the chat box so you can start following their work, but it looks like that feature is disabled at the moment. So if Dr. Lucas, if you're able to turn that feature on so I can share their information with everybody, that would be fantastic. Thank you so much. This is such an honor. Have a fantastic night. Our next, our next presenter is the Honorable Dawn Page. I know her as well. She and I go back to high school days and we're so proud of you, Dawn, as your friends to see your leadership in public policy within the Richmond Public School Board. The Honorable Dawn Page. Thank you, Mr. Flowers. And yes, we do go back. But I um, just want to get back on point. Um, I have the pleasure of presenting, recognizing our honoree, Terry Lee. Terry Lee is a student at Franklin Military Academy, and she is a a junior and she serves as a tutor at her school and the local boys and girls club of, of America. And I, excuse me, she's a sophomore in the 10th grade. I'm a, um, she's I'm a, a, I'm a senior, sorry. I got it all wrong, I apologize. It's okay. It's okay. okay. Thank you, I stand to be corrected. So Miss Lee is a senior. At Franklin Military, right? Okay. 
And she was awarded the top rep monitor in recognition of achieving the highest level of success that a tutor can receive for help to help students pass their rat tests. Terry currently holds the title as the Youth of the Year at the local Boys and Girls Club, a level of recognition that highlights her dedication to service in her community and at school. Terry's academic achievements also are stellar. She has a GPA 4.46. Awesome. And she's ranked number one in her class. She has made the Dean's List and Presidential Honor Roll. Terry is pursuing an associate degree in social studies in a dual enrollment program at J. Sergeant Reynolds Community College. Terry has worked as a summer counselor, an IT intern, from the Virginia Department of Transportation and a youth advocate. She is a multi-talented as reflected in her love for dance, stepping, singing, painting, drawing, as well as a fashion and design. Recently, Terry participated in a program called Teen Styling where youth designs, designers create garments from recycled resources. Terry aspires to be an inspirational leader for family, community, and nature, nation. So again, I am honored to present this award to recognize Terry Lee, a student, a senior at Franklin Military Academy. Congratulations. Thank you, everyone. I would like to thank um, my mentor, Ms. Cheryl Burke, for nominating me. Um, and I would like to thank everyone for having me today. Um, I'm truly blessed. And I will continue to devote myself to mentoring children and educating youth so that they will become better citizens. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Our next presenter is Dr. Yvonne Swin, who's also a board member of Public Pathways. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Flowers. And uh, it is uh, a great pleasure, uh, pl pleasure to present the uh, 2020 Youth uh, Public Service Award to Mr. Uh, Jess Miles. And uh, he is a student of the Richmond Commun Community High School uh, in Richmond, Virginia, of course. And uh, I, before I start, I really like to start by thanking him for providing the wonderful, relaxing background music uh, in the early part of the session and also in the recorded video. So uh, that actually shows something about his talent, but uh, his talent does not stop there. And uh, uh, he is an honor roll student uh, who enjoys speaking publicly, for, uh, producing music, playing tennis, and uh, volunteering to help others in need. Uh, as a high school student, uh, Jazz has already accomplished a lot, and I'd like to take this opportunity to recognize his leadership, service, and demonstrated uh, responsibility to others. And uh, so first, uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, uh, talk about his uh, lead demonstrated leadership, and uh, uh, he was recently elected as the sophomore class president at Richmond Community High School. That speaks a lot about his uh, leadership. And uh, in addition, he uh, founded a, the youth coalition with the Richmond Public School and uh, basically to advise the superintendent uh, to, on eliminating racial injustices in schools. And he also found many creative ways uh, during the pande pan pandemic to con convince students to facilitate change during the uh, during the pand pand uh, pandemic. And uh, as uh, Superintendent uh, Kemras already mentioned earlier, uh, Jazz also interned uh, with him uh, last year. And uh, last but not least, 
in uh, September of 2019, last year, and Jazz received a full scholarship to Virginia Union University. So big congratulations to Jazz Miles. And uh, so let me stop here. I'm going to turn it over to Jazz. Thank you. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, the Honorable Cheryl Burke for nominating me for such a highly esteemed award. I really appreciate that. I'd like to thank my parents for always putting me in the right direction in life and teaching me some of the most valuable lessons that I carry on in my daily life. Just uh, most importantly, being the change that I wanna see and not waiting for change to come gradually. Putting myself out there and standing firm on my beliefs and what I stand for, as I've done um, with RPS, um, helping start a student-led coalition, making sure that students are getting a voice on the discussion of police brutality in our nation and the um, student resource officers in school buildings, whether they um, stay or not. I think that it's very important that as the youth, we're able to not only give our opinion on stuff that's going on, but have an important say in what happens in today's world because we're the future. And I think the pandemic showed that some of um, our leaders that are currently in office aren't fit. And I think as the, um, the new generation who is going to be taking their place, we have to take note of that and put ourselves at, out there earlier in life so that we can excel when it is our turn. So I just like to thank everybody for such a great honor. Jazz, is it possible to start your video? So that, uh, yes. We saw you earlier. If not, that is okay. Well, thank you so much, Jazz. This was wonderful. Excellent. Our next presenter is Dr. Cynthia Mayo, also Board of Directors and member of Policy Pathways. Thank you. Good evening to all the honorables, honorees, speakers, and all in attendance. It is my task to present Deja S. Brown, 2020 Youth Public Service Award. Deja is Cadet Lieutenant Colonel of the High School Battalion. Achieving this rank has been her dream and goal since she went to high school. Deja motivates and helps to build morale in her high school. She has single-handedly started a positive quote initiative to help brighten the day of staff and her classmates. She has been the president of the Black Girls Do STEM program for the past two years. Deja also is a part of the FMA2 a group of females mentored by the local Richmond chapter of the Lynx Incorporated. She had participated in this group since her sixth grade year, and she has been very active in the program. She is also about girl empowerment. She saw where a female could run the school and worked hard until she accomplished this goal. Deja also helped in her school wherever she can or sees there is a need. She excels in everything she participates in. She has also worked with the city of Richmond. She works in her church as a youth department mentor for the younger youth. Deja helps in teaching the Sunday morning jam, which stands for Jesus and me sessions to the younger church members in her school in her spare time she tutors and serves as a volunteer with the central virginia veterans affairs health care system i present to you if yes. I may, Dr. Mayo, would, would those of you who are participating, please mute yourselves or be muted while the presentation are going forward. Please continue, Dr. Mayo. Yes, I'm finished. 
I'm finished. I would like to present Deja Graham. Hello. I would first like to thank God because without him, none of this would be possible. Next, I would like to thank my parents for instilling in me the importance of selflessness and serving others. I would like to thank my sister, for Amia, for showing me that you can accomplish anything you put your mind to. I now want to extend the utmost gratitude to Ms. Cheryl Burke for nominating me for this amazing award. I would also like to thank Franklin Military Academy for strengthening my belief in my core values and sharpening my leadership skills. Colonel Hudson, also in Colonel Hudson for allowing me to start the Positive Court Initiative at Franklin. I lastly would like to thank the Richmond chapter of the Lynx Incorporated for all their unwavering support. Lastly, thank you, Policy Pathways, for the award. As I conclude, I would like to remind you all to be, to be kind to others and always extend the utmost compassion to everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Deja. And now to the college division of the 2020 Public Service Awards. Our first presenter is Dr. Ted Ritter. Good evening. Uh, I bring you welcome from Virginia Union University where for over 155 years, we have fostered leadership uh, from the Richmond 34 to L. Douglas Wilder uh, and going forward and excuse my shameless plug, but I hope some of our recipients tonight will consider Virginia Union uh, as you uh, continue your education. Uh, we would love to have your presence and your vision and your passion on our campus. But I want to introduce to, your, to our next, next honoree, uh, Miss Odessa Hott. Uh, Odessa in her young life uh, has accomplished more than most of us can probably imagine. She is a racial and climate justice advocate. She is a published author uh, who has used an internship opportunity with the Richmond Young Writers to create and to lead uh, a program that allowed children to discuss in a safe environment issues of race, the Black Lives Matter, uh, the protests that we've seen over the course of the last several months uh, after the killings of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor and, and too many others. Uh, she also has received, as I said, a published author. She's received awards for her writing. Uh, and after completing her high school curriculum, uh, she began to study American Sign Language at J. Sargent Reynolds. She graduated in the spring of 2020 uh, while she was serving as a tutor uh, at Reynolds. A member of Phi Theta Kappa Honor Society, she is currently enrolled in an entrepreneurship program at Reynolds and maintains a four-point GPA. Recognizing the fact that we live in a shrinking global environment, and apparently because she had some extra time on her hands, uh, she has been studying Japanese and Korean languages for the last six years. She's participated in a number of activities and organizations, uh, including Girls for a Change, where she secured an internship uh, in a fashion forecasting firm. And you have to be a lot younger than I am to know what that means. Uh, a fashion forecasting firm in New York City. Uh, she's earned a certificate from the Fashion Institute of Technology. She's participated in the Richmond Youth Peace Project, as well as Art 180, uh, which many of you know is a Richmond nonprofit working to create change through the creative arts. She was also chosen to be a delegate from Virginia for the International Congress of Youth Voices in San Juan, Puerto Rico, and has been featured uh, in a couple of articles in Richmond Magazine. For those of us who might worry about uh, the transition and handing off the baton to the younger generation coming uh, forward, uh, I would like to read you something that at the age of 17, uh, Odessa wrote. She said, I seek a world in which skin tone does not require an explanation or a conversation. For this to become a reality, however, systemic racism must be eradicated. Without racism, colorism would have very little power. I think those are hands that we can safely pass the baton. Uh, and it's a great honor for me to present the 2020 Youth Public Service Award to Ms. Odessa Hott. 
congratulations. Thank you, Dr. Ritter, and thank you to Dr. Lucas, tonight's speakers, and everyone at Policy Pathways for this incredible honor. Um, thank you to all of the instructors, some of whom are here, um, who gave us their time and knowledge during the Policy Pathways Summer Online Academy this year. Thank you to my parents for always encouraging me to step outside of my comfort zone. And last, but certainly not least, thank you to my fellow participants, all of whom helped make my program experience so enriching. Um, it was great to collaborate with such a diverse group of young people from all over the country, not just Virginia. Um, so I'm really grateful for that. Um, I'm already applying what I've learned in my day-to-day -day as a research intern for an entrepreneurship event um, at Penn State's Neal College of Business, and as a member of the Virginia Youth Climate Cooperative, which focuses a lot on policy um, and the role it plays in our daily lives, as well as on our climate crisis. So I appreciate the opportunity to participate this summer, and I'm greatly honored to be a recipient of this award. Thank you so much. And our final presenter for the evening is Mr. Albert Grinson. Good evening. Thank you, Mr. Flowers. It is my pleasure to present our last recipient for the evening, Ms. Zayana Bryant. Zayana is a student activist and a community organizer studying at the University of Virginia. Her major focus is issues of racial justice. She is a social impact consultant and author who in January of 2019 published her first book that is a collection of poetry and essays entitled Racism. Zion founded the Charlottesville High School um, Black Student Union um, organization at the age of 14. And she currently is a member of the Charlottesville Youth Council. In the spring of 2016, Zayana wrote a petition calling for the removal of Confederate statues from Charlottesville's parks in 2017. Her primary focus continues to be on the achievement gap and equal access for students of color. In the spring of 2015, Zayana spoke as a panelist advocating for funding of public education and grants with other organizations organizers with Mr. Bernie Sanders at his budget town hall in Charlottesville. At the age of 12, she organized her first demonstration, a rally for justice for Trayvon Martin and other unarmed black lives lost to police violence. Zion was recently appointed as the youngest member of the Virginia's African American Advisory Board. She will work to advise Governor Northam on issues that impact African-Americans across the Commonwealth. She was recently named as a 2020 Root Young Futurist, Teen Vogue's 21 and Under Class of 2019. It is my pleasure to present Ms. Ziana Bryant. Good evening. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Lucas. Thank you for the introduction, uh, Mr. Brinson, and thank you to the board. Um, I am very blown away by everyone's accomplishments. I remember high school because it was just two years ago and <laughs> there was a lot going on and way less going on than you know what's going on right now with the pandemic. So I'm really encouraged and inspired by everyone's accomplishments and I encourage you to continue doing your great work. I want to briefly reflect on a few things and remind us that the work continues. Um, I, as a Black woman organizer and activist, am extremely empowered and inspired by the fact that we have two Black women who will be running for governor next year here in the Commonwealth. Um, we continue to see Black women on the front lines encouraging young folks to get out to the polls. We see Generation Z on the front lines reminding our elected officials that we are holding them accountable and that we will vote them out if they do not live up to the expectations of their constituents. Um, and so for me, I am encouraged by all of this work, but also reminded that it is important to find joy. And so here in Charlottesville, in the wake of white supremacists and Nazis taking to our streets and being threatened and, you know, receiving death threats for over three years at this point, I'm reminded in the importance of finding joy. And so my message for tonight for 
all of the people on this call, regardless of your age or your position, and, and that is that the work will continue, the world will continue to go on, the issues will multiply. And as we continue to work, I believe that it's important that we continue to preserve ourselves. Um, and so particularly for the young people on the call, and especially our high school students, I encourage you to find peace in yourself, um, to take care of yourself, and to remember that you cannot pour from an empty cup. Um, I am so happy to see Senator McClellan on here, who is a fellow Wahoo, and I'm not going to plug my school, but I will say that there are students at all of the universities that have been mentioned who will offer community, and so especially for our high school students, please reach out. Um, I'm a resource, and I would love to speak with students who are hoping to do organizing and activism work as they transition into college. Um, again, the work continues. Tonight, there is a final presidential debate, and so I'd like to remind everyone to show up on November 3rd, not just for yourself, but for your neighbors. There are lives on the line. Uh, there are There's Medicaid, there's health care, there's a living wage on the line, um, and there's equal rights and, and human rights on the line. So please continue to show up and rock the vote on November 3rd. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sister Zaina. We, um, we are about to close, but I want all of us to give a round of applause to all of the honorees tonight, please. I'd like to present now with Acknowledgements, Dr. Delta Bowers. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. What a wonderful, glorious, inspirational evening it has been. And to our young awardees, stay the course, keep the faith, and dare to dream big. Quite impressive. On behalf of the Policy Pathways Incorporated Board of Directors, we'd like to thank our Master of Ceremony, Mr. Gary Flowers. Our keynote speaker, U.S. Senator Mark Warner, Reverend Dr. Leo Whitaker, RPS Superintendent Jason Cameras, the Honorable Senator Jennifer McClellan, and Dr. James Dyke for your participation in this evening's celebration. Congratulations to the Honorable L. Douglas Wilder and our Youth Award recipients again. We celebrate your gifts your service, your leadership, and your accomplishments. We greatly appreciate the professional services provided by Stafford Armstead of Creative One Incorporated and Mr. Jazz M. Miles, who produced the wonderful music that accompanied the promotional video and the pre-event slideshow. We'd also like to acknowledge and a special thank you to Mr. Virtual Morale for his assistance in planning the PPI program. Thank you to Ms. Bertie Jamison for administrative excellence and efficient execution skills. Ms. Veronica Fleming for trying to find some funding for policy pathways. And with that being said, we ask all of you, if you are able to contribute, you can go to policypathways.org and make a contribution there so that we can continue to offer scholarships for our youth and provide world-class policy training for our future leaders of tomorrow. We're grateful for the presence of everyone. Those of you who purchased tickets, our sponsors to include Davis Brothers Construction, the Virginia Department of Transportation, Petersburg City Public Schools, Richmond Public Schools, Change Lab Solutions, Mr. Charles Weiss, and the Honorable Delegate Dolores McQuinn. We've come together to recognize exceptionally gifted policy leaders, advocates, activists, public servants, and community organizers. We've been inspired by their commitment, their voices, their courage, their accomplishments, and their goals. Let us continue to work together to pave pathways, to prepare and assist young people for leadership in public policy, public administration, and in policy-related fields in the public and private sectors. I would also like to acknowledge Ms. Kim Evans for superb technical assistance with the Zoom celebration this evening. Again, thank you for participating and thank you for your support of Policy Pathways Incorporated. Without further ado, I'm going to allow our illustrious president and CEO, Dr. Pilani Lucas, 
to bid you farewell as we close our fall celebration. God be with you always. Thank you so much, everyone. I want to take a moment and let Jazz, we did not get to see his face when he was speaking, but he is live now. And Jazz, if you can unmute yourself, can you unmute yourself? Yes, ma'am. All right. I want to give you an opportunity to say anything you would like. You provided the music for us this evening, and we are so grateful for your presence. And so I just didn't want the night to go by without you having a chance to be seen this evening. Oh, uh, thank you very much. Um, I'd just like to thank you for this great opportunity and everybody at Policy Pathways for just um, having such an amazing program tonight and allowing me to showcase some of my work here with um, the music, providing the music in the background. And if any of you um, have any opportunities for me regarding music, mm -hmm. um, please feel free to email me. My email was provided. It's jazzandbeats at gmail.com. And again, thank you everybody for such an amazing opportunity and amazing program. Very good. Outstanding. I'd like to just thank you on the behalf of the Board of Policy Pathways. Thank you everyone for coming. We have truly been inspired. This is a night of celebration. Thank you to Governor Wilder and to all of our honorees. Thank you, Gary Flowers, and to everyone who participated in the program. Our goal was to get you off of the call, off this session by 8 p.m. We know that there's a lot going on tonight and we have achieved our goal. So God bless you and be well. If Thank I may, you for coming. Yes. If I may, Dr. Dr. Lucas, Dr. Whitaker could not remain with us, but if he were here, I think he would agree. Uh, the James Weldon Johnson and his brother Rosamond were right in the third stanza of Lift Every Voice and Sing. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, thou who has brought us thus far on the way, thou who is by thy might, let us into the light. Keep us, keep us, keep us in the path, we pray. May policy pathways continue to blaze trails for young people, because if it is not for the elders blazing the trail, and using our deeds, not our words, but our deeds as exemplary behavior, then young people have no pathway to follow. And so if we can all agree, let us go onward and upward. May policy pathways live forever. Thank Amen, you. Amen, my brother. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everybody. This was a wonderful evening of celebration and inspiration. Congratulations to everyone. Good night.